Hi everyone, Mr. Lee here. Uh, in this video, I want to show you how to use Google Sheets. Now, when I was taught Google Sheets, um, I was taught it in Excel, but Google Sheet is like Excel, but it's you know you the the handiness of Google. You can share it with group mates and band mates, and it really really does help. Um, it's a very powerful tool. So the way it was described to me is like imagine like a a blank whiteboard, like a canvas board. But the cool thing about that canvas board or that whiteboard or that chalkboard is you know you could you could pin stuff up there or you could you know hold it with magnets if you're using a chalkboard. But the chalkboard or the whiteboard it does is like a giant calculator as well. So it's a really powerful tool. And so I want to show you how to uh, use Google Sheets a little bit better. So. Here I have a data set, right? I have a position versus time data set. I just made up the numbers. Um, so this is like a data set that you could come up with if you were to do a constant velocity lab. And that's what I want to focus on. This is a constant velocity lab. Uh, I want to show you a nifty trick. So we know that the equation for velocity is the change in position over time. So for starting position is, is zero, uh, the change in position from zero to three would just be three. Uh, and same for the time. Now. Instead of actually calculating on my calculator and say, um, you know, three divided by one is equal to three, right? So that'll be my velocity equation. Three divided by one equals three. Now, the cool thing is, is that you can actually type that in to the cell. So I can say it's three divided by one. If I do that, it'll do the calculation for you. In fact, I'm going to do this over here. It can do some pretty nifty calculations. So I just like jam my fingers into the keyboard and I said this cell will be 300 or 345 345 times 1 2 3 1 5 whatever that is right and then it does the calculations for you it's really cool but I want to show you a shortcut so if you have data sets like that's nice enough to find uh, a quick calculator but for a data set instead of typing in 3 divided by 1 what you can do is you can click where it says 3 I'm gonna click on that cell okay and then go to divide it by 1 and push enter and it does the calculation for you so the cool thing about this is if I wanted to change one of these data sets because like I mistyped it um, and so instead of three let's say I wanted a two this cell will remember this equation and will automatically do the calculations for you so I'm going to change a uh, position this three to a two so this cell it'll be a three which will be a two divided by b3 which will be a 1 see what happens see what happens in this cell over here in c3 okay I'm gonna push enter boom changes it for you is that nifty I think it's cool all right now instead of typing in the equation so this divided by this enter right instead of doing that here's something cool that you can do you see that blue box in the lower right hand corner you can drag it down and if you do that, it copies that equation, okay? And it transposes it to match, like according to its logic, uh, what this next cell should be. So what I mean by that is C3, we made it so that the equation is A3 divided by B3 is equal to the cell. And so if I copy it, this cell, it wouldn't make sense that C4 is using the equations for um, A3 and B3. And so if I click there, you can see you know, using that uh, that logic, it's now saying that it's going to be A4 divided by B4. So this cell divided by this cell gives you this cell. Okay, and same for all the cells below it. Okay, now that's pretty nifty. Uh, it's really cool, and for easy numbers like this, like it doesn't really save you time, right? You can do six divided by two, it gives you three. You can plug it into your calculator. But when things get a little bit tougher, um, this really uh, comes in handy. All right, so we have a constant velocity there. All right, now one of the, the tips that we did for, for linearization was um, we had to, oops, we had to square everything. And this is where the squaring thing comes um, especially useful. So if I have, let's say, position squared, right? If I do position squared, let's make this a different color. Let's make that, yeah. You can see how this can save you a lot of time. So here, I'm gonna do equals position squaring it I'm just going to do times this again okay because anything squared is itself but multiply enter so we should see here 3 squared which gives us 9 and over here 6 squared which gives us 36 so I'm going to click on that blue box I'm going to drag it down and it squares it for you okay a really useful tool okay 
All right. Um, another thing that I want to show you a shortcut. Oh, by the way, you can you can do this to be extremely powerful. So, for example, um, if I think it's this button over here, functions. It gives you a list of everything that you can do with these cells, but the most common ones are up here. Okay. Um, like the sum or the average, I use those two a lot. Or you can like count how many data points you have, or like if you want to know what your maximum values are. So uh, I'll show you how to do that. In order to define a cell, you always uh, make it. You click on it, and then you click Enter uh, equal sign. Excuse me. And let's say I want to find the average of all these values. Okay. What I would do, they even tell you the suggestion. I wonder if Google is listening to me. You just type in average. Okay. Um, do the uh, parentheses, click there, and I'm gonna hold down the shift button because I want to select multiple items. So I'm, gonna, I'm holding down the shift and I'm gonna click on 225 and it highlights everything for you. Click enter. So what this cell shows us is that this cell is the average of all of these cells. Now here's something really cool. Um, we know that all of these cells are linked, right? All of these cells are linked by an equation and that these numbers are all based off of um, the data over on to the left. And this cell is also linked to all of these cells. And um, when this, this column, D column changes, this will also change because everything here is based off of whatever we wrote over here. So see what I have, let's see what I can do. So I can change the, the numbers here and it will automatically change the calculations for you. Okay, so let's make this 10. Okay, let's make this, I don't know, 12. Uh, right, I'm just typing in numbers here. Is that nifty? Okay, it changes everything that is linked. So you've also noticed that the velocity column also changed. All right, so I'm gonna go back to, what was it? Three, so three, six, nine, 12, 15. All right, now let's say I wanted to graph a position versus time graph. Uh, in order to do that, I'm gonna click on A1. And if I wanna highlight everything here, I'm just gonna hold down the shift key and click um, where I want my my square to extend to, so over here. Okay, so while holding down the shift key, I clicked on B7, and that made everything from A1 to B7 highlighted. And I can do insert chart. We always want a, a scatter graph. Okay, um, and let's see, did it aggregate it correctly? No, so it says that the x-axis was position, but we want the x-axis to be time. So I'm gonna swap that, um, and we want the y to be position, okay? All right, so we changed the x and the y axes, um, and it doesn't change the label for you, so I'm gonna have to change the label for myself. Position, and this one will be time. Okay. This will be a position versus time graph. All right, uh, it graphs the data for you and we can add a trend line. I'm gonna click on the data set uh, and where it says um, chart and axis title, click trend line and it creates my line of best fit. Okay, and here's the most important part where it says label, click on that, say use equation. Um, because we know that whenever we have a linear form, the slope by the way, is anything before that x, this is the x-axis, the slope always comes before this x-axis. So the slope for position versus time graph, according to this data, is three. And it should make sense because we know that the slope for a position versus time graph is the velocity, and we made it so that the velocity was a constant velocity of three. All right, so I'm gonna put this over here in, in a nice little corner. All right, um, next I wanna show you, let's say you wanted to create a position versus velocity graph. Right? And if you use the, the technique of holding out the shift key, so I wanna highlight all of A1, right? And then I wanna also get um, all of C7. So if you just hold down the shift and you click there, you'll notice that it also includes this time. And we don't want that. So I'm here to show you a, a different technique. So I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna highlight everything I want over here. So I'm holding down the shift at A1. I'm gonna click A7, boom. All of that is highlighted, okay? Um, I lifted off my fingers. Now I'm gonna hold down control and I'm gonna click on C1. All right, 
So you'll notice that when I click on C1, C1 is now highlighted. Then, still holding control, I'm going to hold down the shift button and I am going to click down on C7. So what I did is I controlled, get it controlled, uh, what I wanted to highlight. Okay, so I'll go over that again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I'm going to click on A1, hold down the shift, go down to A7. I highlighted all of that. Okay, my fingers are now off. Uh, I'm going to hold down control. I'm going to click on C1. Okay, and then I'm going to hold down the shift and then go down to C7. Okay, so this entire time I was holding down the control button. Uh, that way we can skip the, the time just, just in general. All right, uh, next I want to create a graph for it. And so uh, you'll see if I do insert chart, uh, we want a scatter plot always. Okay, um, it created a velocity position graph. Pretty cool. Yeah, it just didn't label it for whatever reason. Um, and so I would have to customize my right, axis title. So this one, this is my, my Y axis and my velocity. Um, I know that because my velocity values right here is all three. And so this is three. So this is my, uh, my velocity time, or excuse me, velocity position graph, okay? Or my VT graph. Click enter. Um, and we want to do a vertical title. So vertical, I'm going to call that velocity uh, meters per second, right? And then my horizontal, I want this to be my position. Boom. Okay, and we have a beautiful graph right there. Uh, we can even add a, a trend line. So if I click on the, the data set and I do trend line, linear, equation. Okay, so we can see that there, there's a slope of zero. And we see that. All right, so those are two tips that you can use. Um, let's do a quick recap. You can do uh, equations by clicking on a cell, right? And uh, clicking the, uh, like the variable. So for example, this will be the variable. So I'm going to click on uh, A3. And then you can do whatever mathematical function, right? You can do A3 divided by, let's say we want to do uh, position divided by velocity, right? And so I would do A3 divided by that, click enter, and it does the calculation for you. Uh, we can, we learn how to uh, transpose that equation through multiple cells, all right? Oh, can't divide by zero, so I'll get rid of that. And it copies that equation for you. We learn how to uh, highlight multiple data sets by holding down the shift key. Okay. We also learn how to skip data sets by holding down control, click on whatever else you want, and then holding down the shift key to do multiple selections. So on that note, uh, I just want to show you one final thing. If I hold down the, sh uh, the control key, I can manually select the data. Okay. So holding that control key is basically saying like you're controlling what you want while having everything else also selected. It's a really nifty tool. All right. Um, I hope you learned a thing or two, and I hope this makes your, uh, your lab experience a little bit easier. So instead of typing in everything uh, manually, uh, hopefully you can pick up all these little shortcuts. Um, and also instead of typing everything into a calculator, hopefully these shortcuts also help you out. All right. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.